Hi, my name is Victor Avalar, and I'm from Schneider Electric's Data Center Science Center. And, uh, you know, I get the privilege to travel around a lot and present on data center topics related to data center physical infrastructure. And over the years, based on the questions that I've gotten, I've realized that these topics we have in our industry are just unnecessarily complex. So I had a goal this year to put together and share some videos that answer some of these questions in very basic terms. And I'm going to call these videos 10-minute insights. Basically, they're 10 minutes or less of simplified topics, and we'll put them out there once a month. And at the end, you'll see some uh, show notes uh, with references to white papers and whatnot that we talk about on, on, the, uh, on the video. So for this video, this first video, I want to talk about separation of hot and cold air streams or air containment. And uh, it's, it's a topic that most of you already know about. Um, but when we talk to customers that have separated the hot and cold air flow, they don't, they don't save any energy. And so with this video, I want to explain that uh, when you separate hot and cold air flows, you can save energy while also effectively cooling your IT equipment. So with that, let's start with this slide that shows a picture of a cooling unit. So you'll notice that um, the air, the warm return air is coming up through the filter and then through the cold coil underneath, okay? Now you've seen some of these things in your data centers um, and you know that the hot air, once it goes through the cold coil, it'll come out cold at the bottom. And the idea is to maximize the capacity of your cooling unit by increasing the temperature difference between the return and the supply air. So it's not enough to know that there's this delta T thing. I want to get uh, into the formula for how to reject heat from a cooling unit. Now, I don't mean this to be complicated, right? We're trying to simplify these things. But trust me, when you look at the formula and we simplify it, you're going to realize what I'm trying to do. So let's flip to the formula. Here you can see that Q is measured in kilowatts. And again, this is the formula that we use to calculate how much heat is rejected from the cooling unit. And that heat, for the purpose of this video, will be the heat from your IT equipment. All right. So as I said, Q measured in kilowatts is the rate of heat rejected by the cooling unit. And this represents the heat from your IT equipment, as I said. Then we have the airflow. This is measured in cubic feet per minute. Sometimes you hear people call it CFM. And this is the volume of air moving through the cooling unit. As I said, delta T, that's measured in Fahrenheit, is the difference, the temperature difference, between the cooling unit's return and supply air. And then finally, we have this CP. That is the specific heat of air in rho, which is the density of air. And these are constants for air at set conditions. Now, if I simplify this on the next slide, you'll see that when I enter the, the values for the constants and the conversion factors, I get a more practical formula now. You know, from this formula, you can see that for a given IT load, or Q, there's an infinite number of combinations of airflow and delta T values. And this is where it, it's, it's important to, to realize that I can still remove Q, the IT load, which, which with whatever combination you have. However, when that airflow number dips down below what your IT needs, well, now you're not effectively cooling your IT equipment. Okay, so the lesson here is that you should not waste fan energy by having your CFM too high, the airflow too high, right? And you shouldn't have it so low that you starve your IT equipment. So the key is, and, and this is what I want you, what I want to summarize. What I want to summarize is that your delta T across your uh, cooling unit needs to, needs to be similar to the delta T, uh, the average delta T across your IT equipment. Now that's easier said than done, but just understanding why that is will help you understand how you can save energy, i.e. reduce your fan energy, and still effectively cool your IT. Now, there, there is an importance between the delta T and how, uh, how much capacity you can get out of your cooling unit, 
And that's going to be the topic of our next video, how delta T affects cooling unit capacity. So in the meantime, please leave your comments related to this video, or if you have a question that you'd like us to answer on a future video, please leave those in the comments as well. Uh, thanks for watching, and see you next month. Thank you.